Whoa, you are. hey, we're bringing on the Sabbath. Jeff, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm waiting for you to start. I'm like, hello. Hello, guys. We're live. Hello. We're live. Hey, we got Blake. We got hey, Blake. Hey, we got Blake. Yay, we're Good so excited. To- that you're here. Yeah. Well, at least I am. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this evening with us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and you have a really interesting presentation I can't wait to get to. Oh, man, yeah. It sounds, it's going to be some good stuff. It's, it's something I'm really interested in. You know, a little bit of short notice. So I was, uh, I said, well, you know, I'm just going to talk about something that I really enjoy talking about. So. Oh, it's going to be, yeah, awesome. it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Hey, that's kind of how I do mine, too. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I normally have to talk about stuff I don't like to talk about. Uh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, if so you're cool. watching, please share on your Facebook page. That is what I'm doing right now. I'm sharing on my timeline. Boom. And then I'm going to share on Lisa's Thank timeline. You. He does all the work. And, 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 and Blake he really here, does. if I can, uh, share on the timeline. And I'll share my, my phone. Yes, right everyone. I already saw my picture, so it's not a surprise to me, but it is a surprise to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd like to see I what peaked. my picture is. Sorry, Jeff. I peeked. Okay, you already saw the picture? All right. Yes. Okay, well, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't a big one this time. No, it was really good, though. All right. You were looking for a joke that I, I had no joke this time on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, I'm sharing okay. as well. So I just shared from my phone. All right, awesome. so that's good. Not being rude and awesome. texting while you're having a live show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you went But that's what that. we, we encourage everyone who's on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, watching on our website to comment. Mm-hmm. to uh, participate in, in t- tonight's conversation as we yes. bring on the Sabbath. The Sabbath here starts at 825, so we got an hour and 23 minutes to go to bring, to bring that on. To bring <laughs> it on. Uh, yeah. This is the seventh Sabbath as we're counting towards Pentecost. It's Pentecost. Right. I know. Yes. Well, yeah. We have <laughs> a double Sabbath this weekend, which is exciting. Oh, yes. Lots of rest. Lots of prep, though, too. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to be in Birmingham, Alabama for Pentecost. So if you're out in Birmingham, Come see me. If you don't know where it's at, send me an email at bots at cgi.org, and I'll give you the uh, address. I'll be visiting in Dallas. All right. Wonderful. Um, not Well, I'll be visiting at one of our um, churches that we collaborate with, uh, United Church of God. All right. Wonderful. In Dallas. So I'm excited to go and visit those <laughs> folks. Woo-hoo. Good folks there. And you'll be seeing Johnny side. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'm going to go to, I'm going back home. Just yes. like you. Back home. Go, go Houston and hang out with my so, folks out there. Um, yeah. Katie mm-hmm. Christian Fellowship and... Hang out with my my little son Jeremiah and my beautiful wife Tracy, guys. And and and, and, I, and, I, and I guess after after Pentecost, I'm going to have to uh, go to Disney World for a few days. Oh, so, uh-huh. unfortunately, unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing I that next week. I think there was motive there. <laughs> 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 Well, you do have, you have to use that season pass. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. you got to use it. Yeah. I was reviewing some of the <laughs> bots from previous weeks, and I saw that where you got the, the, the actual bots where you talked about the season pass, mm-hmm. getting the season pass, and I was like, I wonder if he's going to use that anytime soon. Oh, yes. Well, there's you have my to answer. Use it. <laughs> and I, I, I got it because of Star Wars Land. If you know, people yes, know me know I like Star Wars. Yeah. They just opened Star Wars Land in California, and it looks really exciting. And I'm going to be there at 4 a.m. or midnight w- waiting with a bunch of, you know, folks <laughs> in, in a big line for Star Wars Land in, in, you in have Florida. You like, your tent, your sleeping bag, <laughs> stuff like that? Wesley said dorks. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> hey, we're in good company. Yeah, that's I'll all right. be there right there with you if I can. Yeah. Well, we are so glad you joined us this evening, and we want you to join us tomorrow for our webcast. Um, services tomorrow are going to be at 11 a.m. Central Time, of course, and we will be hearing from Vance Stinson. So we surely hope that you can tune in tomorrow and see us at 11 a.m. All right, wonderful. And also, uh, we'll be on uh, and, and Pente- uh, for Pentecost the next day at 2 p.m. Mm-hmm. And it'll be double dose of Vance because Vance will be speaking there as well because we have a lot of our ministry will be traveling all over. For, for Pentecost yeah. and seeing people out there all over, so so it's gonna be fun. Uh, so tune in two o'clock for Vance Stinson. Also tune in Wednesday night to continue uh, at six thirty with Adrian Davis's Bible study on Psalms. And I caught uh, this past Bible study very interesting stuff. He's gonna get kicked off YouTube and some of the things he's saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> he's but, saying but, the truth. But he's saying oh, the truth, man. Yeah. Keep saying the, the truth, truth, Adrian. He's doing a good job of it. Amen. And we are, uh, we are. Uh, it's, it's a. I mean, you think Book of Psalms? What's this gonna be about? It's, it's about some good stuff. I'm sure. Yes. So tune in, and if, and, if, and you can find the replay of that in our app. 
in our yes. app. Yeah, you go to our app yeah. and you will find the replay of the first. And so if you missed it, uh, the Bible study from Psalms on, on Wednesday night, go, go to the app and, and watch it. Wait, there. you have an app? Mm-hmm. We have an app. <laughs> we have an app. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and this man has an app, right? Uh, we have an app as well. And for oh, those who don't remember it. you from last time, wh- wh- who, who are you with and where, where's your app? Yeah, so for those who don't know me, my name is Blake Silverstein. I'm the general manager for Christian Educational Ministries, and we do have an app. The Born to Win app with Ron and Dart is uh, free for download on the iTunes store or Android devices. So go there and check it out. We also have the Born to Win program. It's available on Roku and okay. available on uh, IT, you know, Apple TV. Okay. Um, and that's, uh, that's through yeah. Salem on their uh, One Place or Light oh. Source. So again, Wonderful. free stuff. You can, you can get all your Ron Dart fix there. Um, and you can actually binge watch or binge listen to um, you know, these wonderful series from Ron on our app and it's uh, yeah so for those who don't know Ron Dart uh, he was a very very gifted teacher and so if you're like a lot of people out there maybe new to this or you've been in this for a long time and you're, you're looking for some detailed mm-hmm. teaching you know that's going to get you through all these different books and really yeah. give you like an education yes that is a, that's deep good understanding. stuff deep Wonderful understanding stuff. with Ron Dart yes. Absolutely. That app. and so definitely recommend uh, if you haven't downloaded that app download that app and get that yeah. it's, a, it's a really really great value there Mm-hmm. All right. Well, CGI is really busy right now because I am pleased to announce our Infuse Retreat. Right. And the Infuse Retreat is entitled When All Else Fails. Now, this is going to be based on Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. The theme is designed to be uplifting and all about trusting God, even when everything around you has fallen apart. We're going to, they're going to kick off the weekend with a meet and greet, a uh, finger food and dinner, and a discussion regarding the theme. And during the weekend, they're going to have seminars, activities, a Sabbath service with a local church. And the schedule is going to be updated as new events are planned. It's going to be at the Wyndham Garden Hotel in Somerville, South Carolina. And actually, we're going to be there. We're we going to be like, there? We're taking bots there. All right. Yeah. Bots in South Carolina. Yeah. So all those so. of y'all who are living in South Carolina who have always been wanting bots, mm-hmm. well, I don't know if really anybody would want that, but if you are, <laughs> the, the dozen people who may want to. Who wouldn't want it? <laughs> want some down. bots. We're going to bring, bring it bring it to uh, South Carolina. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm excited to go there. I've never been to South Carolina Oh, well, no, yes, I have. No, that was North Carolina. Never mind. <laughs> I've been over there on that side. It's just, it's, so that's a state you can, you can those, mark off on your state ten, list. Those states are so small compared to Texas. <laughs> uh, I better not say that out loud. I just did. Sorry. <laughs> when people say their state's better than ours, they go, but is it? But is it really? I didn't say it was better. I just said it was smaller. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for reservations, um, you can phone 843-875-875. 3300. And uh, you just asked to book with the Infu- CGI Infuse Retreat. So, um, and the link, the link is, probably, I think he put the link on the, on the screen. Am I supposed to read all of this? No, that's just, 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 just okay, the basic. I think that's, that's the basic. So, he, he yeah. can put the link on the screen and yes. show uh, the really the best place to find it. So, infuse.live. Yes. So infuse.live. Infuse. And, live. Uh, or live, depending on how you want to pronounce it. L-I-V-E. Live or live. Infuse.live. <laughs> And uh, look under events, and you will find the information you need to join us and be a part of the Infuse Retreat. And Infuse is for, uh, yeah. for 18 to 30, eight, 18 to 30 yeah, or, as, or not, young at heart not people. Just, not just single. <laughs> well, I'm actually taking, I'm taking my daughter who's 18, so I'm letting her get a taste of what Infuse is yes. now because it seems kind of, seems kind of dis, displaced for us because it, it seems like all the activities are far away. Mm-hmm. But hopefully she'll get a chance to meet some people and connect with some of the 18 to 30 year olds in the church now that she's an adult. So wonderful. Mature for your age or you know, immature for your age, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But if you're out there, it's 18 <laughs> and 30, we definitely want, and yeah. you're in that area, we definitely and want you to you be a part be, of this. You can be, be single this. or married. I found that out too. It's not just for um, singles. No, it's, yeah, this is this is just for like, if you're, you know, a young family. It's just, just that age range. We yeah. want to have a, a, mm-hmm. a really nice ministry that serves that age range yes. and that's what Infuse is all about so definitely join us if you can mm-hmm. and, or, and, and go to the website and just look at what's, what's on there a lot of great articles on Infuse.live a lot of uh, interesting things you can you can find there uh, to, mm-hmm. that, that, that may be a benefit to you so definitely go there and check it out and we will be back 
we're always talking about we'll be back. Well, but in two weeks, we'll be back. And I, I haven't talked over to Lisa, but you'll be able to join us in two weeks. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. I'll make sure. Right. Two weeks. We'll be back, and uh, we'll, I don't we'll know who's gonna be in this July. chair. I won't be back. I don't know who's gonna be in this chair, but we're gonna fill this chair with somebody <laughs> in two weeks. And that's July twenty, uh, June twenty first, June twenty first. We will be back, and then it's July fifth that I'm not able to come. <laughs> that's right, and that's I'll the, be in Missouri. <laughs> So that's the that's only right. day that I know of. All right. Well, let's look at some comments here. I, I'm, I'm going to start and go to the, yeah. the Facebook. We have lots and see of what we got here. We got all our uh, channels. All right. And, and okay. Will Laval says, thank you, Jeff. You're more than welcome here. So I guess we'll, he's over in that area. So come see us. Jeff Steele. They don't uh, always know what the topic is, but it's Bible based. So Amy our, says, our hi, Blake Silverstein. Hi, Amy Hart. Yeah, Amy hi, says that. So you, you see the comments as well. There's a lot of comments on here. I don't know if I can get to all the comments, but there's a lot of happy Sabbaths from everyone, from all the regulars, from Amy, uh, Jeff Steele. We got Alicia Monroe Prime, Skip Martin hi, out there. Sure. We love Skip Martin. Hey. Uh, going, my I'm, dad is watching I'm from Crossville. So hello, Scotia. dad. <laughs> and I'm going to Nova Scotia one day to visit um, Alicia. That's a good reason to go. <laughs> I am going up there. All right, we have uh, L Lorinda Armour. Oh, hi, Lorinda. There. And Welcome. Latoya Coleman has says Happy Sabbath, and uh, quite a few, quite a few. Man, so many comments. It's kind of oh, they, they go to all those. So thank you all for joining us on Facebook, and then we look over on YouTube while you're getting that ready. Okay. And we have Pete, uh, uh, Paul Shaw out there. All right, member, local member here says Happy Sabbath. We have uh, Jaeger One has Happy Sabbath. And uh, so thank you all for joining us, uh, the folks who are watching on YouTube, on Facebook, and on yeah. our website. And if you're watching on Roku yeah. or Apple oh, TV, no. get your phone out, send us a message. <laughs> <laughs> I should say hello to my mom, because she does watch on Roku and normally, sometimes she watches on Facebook, mm -hmm. but she doesn't comment when she's on Roku. She just watches. Yeah. So I'll say hi to her. I miss um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, we have Mr. Omaha. I wonder if he's from Omaha. And was that you that answered him, Wesley? So he, asked, he asked if Bots was going to be on tonight. I guess that was way earlier. Right. But we have RJ and Margie, Rick Four, Christine, uh, Marion, Sister with Love. And everyone's just really... I, I love the fellowship that goes on over here. Mm -hmm. It's so neat because everyone like checks in. It's just like, hey, how are you doing? You know, and says, well, you know, um, someone says, well, my, my sickness is getting better or something. You know, it's just like a conversation over here. I love it. And William One is on here and Anita Coleman also, Margie, Ray, and so, so, Trina is over here too. So, so bring on a Sabbath is a gathering place. Yes. For all the cool people yes. keeping the Sabbath. Oh, the cool people. I love <laughs> it. All right. Yeah, yeah, all, all the people who are on the, in the know. You're yes. in the know. You know about the Sabbath. Oh, and, and come, come be a Amy. part of a uh, Amy Sabbath. over here, double dipping. And Carl <laughs> is over here also. And so we have lots of people online. That's awesome. All right, All right. wonderful, Watching wonderful. Us and live. the more we get, the hopefully the, the better it gets. Um, commenting is very important. You know, people don't know this, but the more you interact on Facebook, um, the more visual yes. it gets online. So you know. Feel free to say hi, you know, definitely if you're out there, if you're what they call a lurker, um, you know, say hello, say happy Sabbath. It's, or it's if very you're you say happy Sabbath, peeps. Yeah. Peeps. <laughs> <laughs> I and, love and, that. And definitely, and definitely share. Share it, comment, that helps, you know, and it, it really helps does. to spread the message. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. <laughs> all the good stuff. Bring the I've notification watching, bell on YouTube. I've been watching YouTube. <laughs> Hit that Bring notification, the notification bell. bell. Yeah. <laughs> I love that part. So, I what happened, so what happened with YouTube, <laughs> they used to have it on YouTube where that if you just subscribe to someone, mm -hmm. you would think, well, I'm subscribed to them, then I'm going to get a notification about what's going on in their channel. Nope. They, they, they said, nope, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna mess everybody up. Yep. We're going to include a bell. Now you got to go back and ask everybody mm -hmm. to click the bell, and then maybe you'll get a notification. Oh, yeah. They're always the shifting around. They're shifting around a lot <laughs> for nefarious mm -hmm. Purposes of sure. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. In the All right. So we will. Uh, we're going to take our first break, and when we get back, we're going to talk see. about something fun. Yeah, sure. yeah something fun. <laughs> All right. We'll Everyone loves it. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment.
The death of a loved one is a terrible thing. Knowing that this person has been removed from your life is awful enough. But then, many times, when a person goes to a Christian minister for comfort after such a loss, you're told that since this person has not accepted Christ in this lifetime, he or she, at this very moment, is burning in hell. What a horrifying thought that a loved one is suffering in red-hot agony 24 hours a day, month after month, year after year, forever and ever, with no relief in sight. This person will have to endure ever-blazing fire for eternity. Actually, none of this is true. If you've lost a loved one, that person is not screaming and withering and burning agony. They are simply sleeping peacefully. We can prove this to you from the Bible. We have an Armor of God message on this subject by Mike James. It's called The Fate of Unbelievers. It's free on our website at cgi.org. Please check it out so that you can learn more about the true fate of your loved ones who have died not accepting Christ. Again, it's called The Fate of Unbelievers by Mike James. Welcome back. We are back again. We are back. We're, we're, we're not really good at those transitions, are we? We're, we're always just like just surprised. We're back. <laughs> I know. Well, we're like busy talking to each other, and we should be ready to talk to you guys. I mean, what is wrong with us? <laughs> well, I don't know. I won't answer that. All right. So you have an interesting presentation for I us. I do. My, my presentation tonight is entitled Three Wishes. So last week, my girls and I went to see a new movie. And that new, well, not a new movie. It's a, it's a remake of an old movie. And so it's it is called a new movie. Aladdin. It is a new movie. <laughs> Who, I have, I'm sure some of y'all have already seen Aladdin. I know Amy saw it. I know you saw it. I saw it, yeah. and I thought it was I great. It. And I actually, and some people will, will probably not like me for this, but I think I liked it better than the original. I, <laughs> I, liked, it, I liked it better than the original cartoon, too. But now, most of you know that story. If you've seen Aladdin, Popper meets Princess. But the movie was almost exactly as I remember the old Disney cartoon. And the most, but the most expi exciting part of that story was where the boy gets a genie and is granted three wishes. Yeah, who would want that? Yeah, I know. Sounds like a pretty <laughs> well, good deal. In that movie, I don't remember this part in the Disney cartoon, but in that movie, he asked for time to think about his wishes. And that was very interesting to me. It kind of made me think of Solomon and how he kind of like reasoned through his choice of wisdom oh, yeah. and that kind of gave the character a whole lot more depth in this movie this time did you see that Jeff I mean did you notice that about him it kind of gave him a little bit more depth oh it's definitely that's what I liked about the movie it, because it, it gave the characters more depth more you know again it's just a, it's just a fantasy movie yeah but, but it definitely it gave him more motivation. I think I really like the ending, which I won't give, won't yeah. give away to anybody, but <laughs> definitely there's good motivation. Well, we know there's, good, there's a good happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm kind of getting on a rabbit trail, rabbit trail here, so let's get back <laughs> to the three wishes. Now, what if you were given three wishes? Would you have immediate thoughts about what you would want to wish for, or would you think about it? Hmm. What do you think? Well, while you're thinking about it, I want to talk to you about some wishes that were made in the Bible. Hmm. What? Wishes in the Bible? Is that wait, wait. even possible? Amy, say, Amy says, if I had three wishes, I'd wish for wishes for infinity. But that according to one of the rules that from was the Shep movie, rules. you can't wish for more wishes. Can't wish for more wishes, Amy. Sorry, you Amy. Can't, you can't do that. <laughs> Sorry. Game in the system, Amy. <laughs> now, wishes in the Bible, though, is that even possible? Well, I'm actually going to give you some scriptural references where there were actual wishes. I'm going to prove it with some scriptures. Now, the first one I have, I'm just going to, I'm not going to put them on the screen or anything. You won't see them. Luke 12, 49. So, and Jesus is saying, I came to cast fire on the earth and wish that it were, it were already kindled. Uh -huh. So, do y'all remember where he was? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And then also in Revelation 3, 15, it says, I know your works. You are neither hot or cold. 
I wish that you were either hot, cold, or hot. <laughs> Those are wishes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it may not say that in like the Greek text, but it, it conjures that. It's like, I wish that that was happening. So, but in reality, I will look that like up. I just said, these, these verses aren't like the wishes in the movie. Of course, the type of wishes in the movie are not possible instantaneously. But the reality of wishes can, can be explained in a rather simple statement. And that is, a wish can be the forerunner of change. If the wish is based on truth and positive change, it can become a goal and then a reality. But a wish can be wrong if we give it precedence over God's plan for us. Mm -hmm. So the basic reality of wishes are goals. Wonderful. So, That's goals right. are great things to have, they don't really you are. think? They really are. And when, no. you, when, you, when, you get, when you get a good second, I'll tell you what the Greek word means. Oh, good. Good. I can't that. wait. Okay, so I personally believe that goals will make you more focused in life. Also, goals help you get more things done daily. Now, when was the last time you wrote down some goals? Um, my husband has a long list that he keeps up with. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of laughing at him right now. <laughs> Not really, and but I I really think of this list what as his the daily. List at? Oh, it's like on a clipboard. He just has like a list, and it just has a million things on it. But I really think of this <laughs> as his daily goals mm -hmm. or his weekly goals. I mean, he has a lot of things on there. Some of them are daily. Some of them are weekly. I mean, he has his little ideas about it, but he keeps this long list of his goals. I'm, I'm guessing sure. you're on the list, right? I better be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> but, <laughs> Good answer, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> he said he had a separate clip for just, for, just for me. <laughs> so do you write daily lists? Now, have you thought about one, five, or 10-year goals lately? Be sure to take time to review your goals. Set them and stay on a steady course. You might make your three wishes come true. All right. Yeah. Well, I have my wish, my, not my wishes, my goals. Uh, your goals. <laughs> and I have a whiteboard in my garage that, awesome. I, that I walk by every morning mm -hmm. and I see the whiteboard right there. Here's my, here's my goals, and I guess some of the goals are, are, are my goals for the church, you know, things that we're doing, we, we got to meet this goal, we're going to meet this goal, mm -hmm. as far as evangelism and stuff. And they have my personal goal, uh, which, you know, that, that I'm working on as well. So it's always, always good if you have goals, mm -hmm. and be a person of goals, that you, that you see them every day, yeah, you remind get, yourself of it, them every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes you get it done. All right, so the Greek word is, oh, oh this, this is my southern Greek. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, all right. Southern Greek here. I love his Southern all right. Greek. So you come a he. You come a he. Uh, and that means to wish, okay, by implication, <laughs> to pray to God uh, for God's will. So, so that's asking, you know, you know, you're asking God's will to be our will. Like when right. Christ said, you know, like, you know, God's will be done. Mm -hmm. We're asking, you know, hey, I'd like this in my life. So this is like you're wishing, you're asking God, but coming mm -hmm. to God for that petition. And hopefully our goals align with God's goals. Right. Those, those are the ones he answers. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Well, it was a fun movie, and it made me really think about, you know, the reality of wishes. And so I kind of just wanted to bring that in. Yeah, so, so Willow like Love Al says we can be like King Solomon and ask for wisdom. That's, you know, that's a good thing. If your goal is wisdom, oh. the, the only thing is, think about it. If you ask for wisdom, right, I think if, if I'm asking for wisdom, be prepared to go through some hard times. That's because right. wisdom comes from our experience. Mm -hmm. so, so if you ask for patience, mm -hmm. be prepared to wait in line. <laughs> right? right? How do you get patience? So I, I didn't ask for patience. I didn't ask for patience. I still have to wait in line a lot. You want wisdom, okay, it's Trina, very easy. Trina actually right wrote, wrote some wishes. She says that she would wish that everyone was healthy, that everyone would have basic necessities for survival, and that evil was done away with completely. Well, that's pretty good wishes. Awesome wishes. Good. like that. We well, know what? Saying. Those wishes, Trina, are going to come true in God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen. And that leads to what I'm going to talk about <laughs> the next. All right. In, 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 in John, which we'll look awesome. at when we get back. Is there any more comments? No, not not yet. All right, because I, I want to I want to go ahead and go to your mind because I'm getting excited about Blake. Y'all got to stay wow. tuned for All what right. Blake has. 
Right. Uh, I'm excited to talk give, about give it. Give us a little, 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 little something about what you're going to talk about. Uh, talking about how the brain works and how mm. the, you know, what science says about how the brain works and what the Bible says about um, how the brain works and what the, what the Bible calls the heart, right? We mm -hmm. just talked about this, what's your mm -hmm. wishes. So um, that's what the, the Bible refers to it as, is your heart. So what I'll be talking about is um, if that's the case, then how should we be conducting ourselves day to day? Um, the right. title of, the, uh, of, the, of this segment is called uh, Guard Your Heart. So. Guard Your Heart. So, so stay tuned for Guard yes. Your Heart. Thank and you. you're and going to have to participate in this. So we, we're going to need your participation. I like interaction. You know this. Interaction. Last time I was on here, I like to interact with, in this the, one. with the I'm, all right. I'm ready at the helm here. All right. So when we get back, <laughs> I'm going to continue our, our Bible study, Drew John. Our long Bible study, Drew John. It takes a while. We're going to look at just another little section of That's John. Okay. Uh, That's okay. Awesome. But we like to like know, like to look over it, talk about it, just think about it a little bit. And we'll do that when we get back right after this break. All right. We'd like to offer you two booklets on today's program. We'd like to offer you the Book of Galatians, a commentary. In his epistle to the churches of Galatia, the Apostle Paul sternly warns those who were turning away from the one who had called them in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Get this booklet and learn more about grace in the Book of Galatians. We also want to offer you What is Sin? To some, pleasurable activities such as card playing, dancing, and movie going fall under a category called sin. Is this true? What is sin? To get both of these booklets free of charge, all you need to do is call toll-free 1-888-578-8791. That's 1-888-578-8791. Or you can order by going to our website, www.cgi.org. That's www.cgi.org. John, but I'm going to answer Amy's question. Amy says, is it wrong to wish a liar's pants would really catch on fire? <laughs> yes, it is, Amy. Yes, it is. Okay. So John, John chapter 12. <laughs> John <Okay>. chapter 12. <laughs> we, don't wish, we don't wish harm on anyone. Violent harm is wrong. <laughs> All right, John chapter 12, and we've been looking at John. And uh, John 11, if you remember, is where Christ did his final of the seven miracles that are really highlighted in John where he, he brought Lazarus back to life. Mm -hmm. And so we're still in this aftermath, and this really was the uh, catalyst to get the, the leaders of the, uh, the priests, the chief priests, to really want to kill Christ. And they also wanted to kill Lazarus, as we'll see here. This is, like a, this is one of the catalysts that kind of leads to the crucifixion of Christ. Because this was the, I mean, all the signs, you know, walking on water, you know, uh, turn turn water into wine. Those, you know, those those are like parlor tricks compared to bringing, yeah. you know, you know, come, coming forth from the from the, the grave. Big guns. Don't forget, so, on the Sabbath. Yeah, he, yeah. So, so all the things that he did. So John chapter twelve. Sorry. We're going to look at verse nine. Cause we went through the first eight <laughs> verses last time. Uh, verse nine says, "Now a great many of the Jews did that, uh, knew that he was there, and they came not for for Jesus' sake only, but they may also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead." And I guess I would probably. Yeah, I'd like to see that also. I'd be there as well. I mean, sure. if I was like, I heard somebody was raised or dead, I gotta see this. I want to you know, see what it looks like. See if he's, you know, if he's decayed in here, or if he's, you know, you know, fully formed or whatever, or how he smells. I don't know. You know, you're interested in yeah, Lazarus. Absolutely. But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus <laughs> to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. So this is the, again, again, this is the catalyst. This is where a lot of people are like, "There's some Jesus is the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's absolutely. what God has sent." And so this leads to what, 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 what we see next, which is, the, which is called the triumphal entry. Uh, and this is in verse 12. This is the next day, mm -hmm. right after, after this. And this is all, the, all these things are leading right up to when Christ is going to be crucified. 
The next day, a great multitude uh, that had come to the feast, when they, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out. Right? And again, now, this is, a lot of people call this Palm Sunday. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done the math to see when it actually was? <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> this was on the 10th well, day of the month. On... Right? Okay. okay, so this is on the 10th day of the month. Mm-hmm. And uh, when was Christ crucified? What day of the month is that? The 14th. 14th. Okay. The 14th mm-hmm. of Nisan. Mm-hmm. So the 14th of Nisan is on Wednesday, and you count t- back to Tuesday's the 13th. Monday's the 11th. Wait, wait, wait. Tuesday's the 13th. 12th. Monday's the 12th. Mm-hmm. It would be on Sunday's the 11th. Saturday. Sabbath. It's a Sabbath, so so a lot of people will tell you this happened on a Sunday, but he's you know he's he, he's he's proclaiming that he's the the king of Israel, which the Sabbath points to, as we can see in, in Hebrews and throughout all of it. You know what the Sabbath is pointing to that kingdom of God. It, we are we are picturing that every time we keep the Sabbath, we are picturing the mm-hmm. kingdom of God and the rest that God is going to give to the whole world. Absolutely. And so, what perfect day? Then Christ for this to happen was on the Sabbath day, and this is really going to make those leaders even angrier uh, right. when, when this happened. So they say, "Hosanna!" Uh, this is uh, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, "Fear not, daughter of Zion, because your King is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt." His disciples didn't understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified. They then remembered that these things were written about him and that he had done these things to him. So, so, I'm, so this is a quote that uh, comes from Zechariah 9. So I won't put in the original co- the, the context because I guess they didn't realize it then the context of what was going on. Yeah. And, and again, and there would be some critics who would probably say, well, wasn't Christ just kind of uh, like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy? Because he probably read this and said, oh, I got to ride on a donkey. <laughs> That's so, right. So, yeah. so I'm going I'm to get, get on this donkey and ride out. Well, well. I mean, he knew about it, of course. He knew he was going to ride on a donkey. And, and he, was, he, he knew that, it, yes, it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Christ knew that he had to get on a donkey. But everything that surrounded it is in this prophecy. In Zechariah 9, it says, uh, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Who, who, who has salvation other than Christ? Who has salvation under Christ, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt and a foal of a donkey. And so the people, they wouldn't cry out, you know, they're, they're crying out, blessed is he who comes in the name of Israel, Lord. They're probably, they're, they, I'm sure they didn't know about this scripture. I mean, there's, you know how folks are illiterate in the Bible now? <laughs> I'm back sure then, back then yeah. they were probably much, really illiterate, other than probably the scribes and Pharisees and stuff. So they didn't know where this came from. But they were saying, they were saying this thing because he proved through these miracles that he was the son of God. And they're like, this is the guy who, rose, who, who raised Lazarus. This is the guy who's performing miracles. This is our Messiah. And, they're, and so, so the crowds are praising Christ. This is fulfilling the prophecy. Mm-hmm. So there's no way some dude, like, like if you had some guy just get on a donkey mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and just rode out on a donkey, there's nobody going to, if he didn't do what Christ did, nobody's going to say anything about what he did, are, are they? Yeah. You know, because of right. what Christ did, what he performed, his actions, and also his character, who he was, is why they were behind him. And they were like, they were praising that he was, he was entering uh, triumphantly here that, that we read. Uh, you know, anyone can say they were mes- the Messiah. Uh, there was a guy, and I think I mentioned this before on here, but I'll mention it again because it always gets to me, where there was a guy, I don't know if I told you the story, Blake, uh, that came to our office who said he was Jesus. No. And so, so, so the man comes in, says he's Jesus, and so I'm in my office, uh, which is behind our studio, it's back, back there, and I'm in my office, and, and Vance kind of brings him in and says, hey, here's a guy here, you know, and, and Vance is talking to him, and he talks about how he's Jesus, and he read this uh, little thing that Vance wrote that proved it, I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so he's in there explaining this to us, and then Vance makes up an excuse where he needs to go somewhere, and so he leaves me alone <laughs> uh, w- w- with this uh, would-be Messiah Lucky in my you. office. Yeah, you got Jesus like, all to yourself. Yeah, I got him all to myself. And so, 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 I'm, uh, so. Did you start confessing? So no, no. I said, I said, I said, all right, if you're Jesus, let's do something. Right, show me something. Just like the disciples. Show me something. <laughs> like the disciples, right? And, and, and that's what he said. He said, I'm not going to show you any signs or, or wonders or whatever. And I said, well, that's fine. That's pretty convenient. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the door. <laughs> I'm time for you. 
because I'm, I'm really no. busy. So, so that, <laughs> I've been working at CEM enough to get some calls similar to this, so I can empathize with you. Yeah. So again, but Christ proved it, right? So, he, so Christ is not some guy. He, Christ did not have a mental problem, a mental illness, mm -hmm. or or a delusion. Christ proved that he was the Messiah, and this is a, this is like the the pinnacle that he's fulfilling prophecy. And so what we're reading here in Zechariah is that fulfillment. Uh, verse 10 says, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. So I ask you, where is that at? That's the entire world. Mm -hmm. The entire world. So this prophecy is talking about someone who's going to come rule the entire world. And he hasn't done it yet, but he will. And that is Christ. And, so, and, and he's fulfilling this. And as for you also, verse 11, because of the blood of your covenant... I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. And you notice how it mentions the blood you know, of the covenant. Uh, return to the stronghold, your prisoners of hope. Even today, I, I declare that I will restore double to you. He's going to restore you know, folks who have been imprisoned. Uh, for I have bent uh, Judah, verse 13, my bow, fitted the bow with Ephraim, and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and make you like the sword of a mighty man. Verse 14, then the Lord will be seen over them. And his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord will blow the trumpet and go from whirlwinds from the south. So you, you put all this together with Christ and what we know about what Christ did. And you know, after, after this happens, he's, he's crucified and then he's resurrected. And then uh, he's with the disciples you know, for a time. And then, uh, and then he, he leaves them. He goes, he goes up into heaven. And then we're, what we're coming on by now, Pentecost. And then just the, as he went away, he's going to come back. And so we talk about wish fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So my yeah. wish, mm -hmm. so yeah, people ask what their wish is. My wish is that Jesus comes soon. Mm, I hear that. If I have three wishes, all three of them are, Jesus Christ comes soon. <laughs> is a wish, because we, we live in such a world that needs this right now. So much more. When you mm -hmm. see the news, when you read what's in the news, and you see how, how just the, the most innocent in our, in our society are being treated and preyed exploited upon. Yeah. and preyed upon mm -hmm. and how it's getting worse and worse and how it really seems like nothing is getting done. Our world needs Christ right now. Verse 14, that the Lord will be seen over them and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord will blow the trumpet in the world from the south. Verse 15, the Lord of hosts will defend them. They, who's that? You know, the, the, his people. They shall devour and subdue with sling stones. They shall drink and roar as with wine. They shall be filled with blood like basins, like the corners of the altar. And the Lord God will save them in that day as the flock of his people. That's us, right? We are the flock of his people. Mm -hmm. For they shall be like jewels of a crown lifted like a banner over his land. This is not merely poetic language. That's our transformed as we become a part of this kingdom of God and we're there with him. For how great is his is goodness and how great is his beauty, grain shall make the young men drive and new wine the young women. So this is the kingdom of God, God's plan. And so, so when Christ entered that day, is an announcement of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, really, that's, that's kind of in a sense is where it's beginning. Hmm. We're, we're, we, have, we have a small part of that now. We have, a, we have the ability to live by those laws in our life. We have the ability to make him our king and to uh, spread the propaganda, right? We're propagandists for the kingdom of God. Really? We gotta mm -hmm. spread that word mm -hmm. so that as, as other prophecies say that that, you know, we'll start small and we'll fill the world. So again, I'm gonna stop right there. We got some more in John we'll talk about later, but I uh, just wanted to point out little, that little, little section of John and, and, and so much that we can find there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah good, good stuff. Very good. And yeah, Skip Martin mentions also the tenth was the day the Passover lamb was chosen. Right, so if you go back, I, I, right. I, he's back in Leviticus, and you look at the tenth day of the month. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that, that, that this, was, this is him being presented as the Passover lamb uh, that day mm -hmm. on the Sabbath, if you, if you could do the, do the math mm -hmm. correctly. Uh, and that's all I see right there. Oh, I see a lot on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I've, got a, <laughs> I've got one. Amy says a girl can dream, right? About the pants, pants on, on fire. fire. Yeah, pants on fire. A girl can dream about the pants on fire. Right. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> I think she directed that at me. <laughs> but that was funny. 
Oh, yes. All right. All right. So, so, and there's a lot of comments. We can't get to all of them. We, we thank you for tuning in. We're going to take another break because, again, I'm excited. Y'all got to stay tuned uh, for, for our presentation coming up here uh, for, from our, our, our special guest tonight, Mr. Blake Silverstein Thanks, from, from, from CEM. So we'll take a short break and we'll be right back in just a moment. Don Henley once wrote these words, all this fighting over who will be anointed, how can people be so blind? What does it mean to be an anointed Messiah? God once promised that King David's kingdom would endure forever. God promised that David's throne would endure forever and that this kingdom would have dominion over all the earth. But people usually don't like to talk about an anointed Messiah ruling the earth. Instead, they want to think about going to heaven to be with Jesus after they die. We want to help you understand this issue better. As for our free booklet, Messiah, you can get it on CGI.org. It's free. Again, read our booklet, Messiah, on CGI.org. did a good job. I did not put this together. So he, uh, he invited me a couple days ago and I said, well, you know what, you know, I'll be happy to come on and hope everyone's having a nice Sabbath this evening. Mm -hmm. um, what I wanted to talk about to you guys about tonight was uh, a topic that I find to be very interesting, which is where, um, how the brain works, how the human mind works, and what the Bible says about what, how the, the mind works as well. And it really comes from a, a sermon that Ron Dart did um, in 1988 called A Closet Never Cleaned Out. Um, and in this sermon, Ron talks about how uh, your brain and your mind is like a closet that is never cleaned out. Mm -hmm. um, that everything you've experienced, everything you've ever thought about, everything that you've ever been a part of mm -hmm. goes into that closet and it never gets cleaned out. And a lot of people might be thinking right now, well, there's some things that I would like to get into that closet and clean it out. But uh, things that have happened to us that are bad, things that have been traumatic. Um, but as you very well know, um, those things are a part of you. They give you who you are being. They give you your essence or your identity, is what science will say. Um, you also might be saying, well, there's some things in that closet that I can't seem to retrieve. Um, so how can that be the case? Well, what we're talking about is the idea of the conscious mind, it coming into the conscious mind, then being downloaded into the subconscious mind. And so um, that's where that comes into play. Sometimes we repress things. Sometimes we suppress certain kind of details. And what's interesting is they found a lot of uh, great evidence that they can retrieve a lot of these memories of things that you wouldn't even be able to consciously um, recall um, and hypnotism, right? So they'll hypnotize you and they'll be able to have you recall all kinds of memories um, that you're just not even, if you were asked about it, you would not be able mm -hmm. to, um, to recall it. Um, what's interesting is, and what I really like is whenever the Bible and science can shake hands on something. Mm -hmm. It seems to be so far and few uh, these days uh, that they do that, but um, it's also interesting to me that most of the stuff that's in science um, the foundation of science comes from uh, stuff that was really originally <laughs> commissioned by religious institutions and organizations. Um, but the, um, anyways, I don't digress too much here, but how the mind works and what the Bible refers to it as is your heart. And don't worry, I'm not going to go to every scripture in the Bible that talks about the heart. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think there's on, somewhere in the upward of about a thousand different references. Mm -hmm. We'd be here all night and tomorrow and probably in the Pentecost. Yeah, right. Um, but nonetheless, I want to talk about a couple of them. And, and this one, this scripture that I'm going to first start with is not, um, doesn't have the word heart in it, but it talks about how this is the case, that everything that goes into your mind, everything that goes into your brain is something that has a mark. It has an indelible mark on who you are and how you, how you be, your behavior. And that's uh, in Luke 8, 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be revealed, 
neither anything hidden that shall not be known and come to light. You know, I get this idea in my, main, my mind that, you know, on Judgment Day, and, there, and there's all indication that this will happen. This will, you'll carry all this with you up to Judgment Day. I mean, how could it be any other, any other way? Who you are, how, you know, who you be, and all the things you've learned is a collection of all these things. So you will bring this with you. But I was saying is that I imagine on, on Judgment Day you have, you know, this big screen TV of Blake Silverstein, <laughs> this is your life, you know. <laughs> And um, I don't know if there's much scripture to prove it's going to go down like that, but yeah, whew, is right. Uh, I, I suppose we'll that it, fast forward or something. Yeah, it's right. You know, I, I've noticed myself kind of cringing. You know, maybe make myself life. very small. I was thinking about your life. No, I'm kidding. Oh, oof, yeah. Ha ha ha, Lisa. I was thinking about mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, you know, it's funny. Is that idea okay. and that concept has actually stopped me from doing a lot of dumb things? Is that it is? Uh, as my my brother would say, if mom wouldn't like it, don't do it. And, you know, uh, my version of that is it's all being recorded, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's steadied my hand in a couple of moments, and it's also, uh, you know, permitted me from doing some pretty silly things. What's pretty interesting is that what science says about this is that your brain and mine can only process anywhere between four and seven bits of data in any given moment, which is pretty phenomenal because uh, you're being bombarded right now with mm -hmm. all kinds of information. Mm -hmm. Just imagine your field of view right now mm -hmm. and look around at all the colors from the top left and all the different, you know, things that we're experiencing right now. I mean, look at all mm -hmm. the different types of objects that are in our field of view. Imagine all the, I'm, I can hear the air conditioner, I can even hear some cars and off of the, the and, uh, and feel the temperature of the air. I mean, imagine, and Smells. now that I've brought it to your attention, mm -hmm. you're aware of it, yeah. but you can really only process four to seven bits of data. I can see a lot of wives out there right now kind of nudging their husband. Yeah. You're more on the four side, um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> which it is true. <laughs> Women are better at multitasking. Uh, a lot well, of, I want you to describe there is like what some people do as an exercise to develop presence, mm -hmm. like especially if you're going to like be a public speaker mm -hmm. and you get there and you're nervous, yeah. so you just want to smell what's going on, you want to look around, mm -hmm. and you want to make yourself present in your environment. And when you start becoming present, then, then the nervousness goes away, usually for some people. Well, so for some people, or, or you know, because they're focusing that data, right? That you're, you're yeah. getting present in the moment. If you're, if you're nervous, you're probably thinking about, you're, you're anxious towards the future. You're, you're mm -hmm. using one of those four bits of data on future possibilities and problems of the future, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so what's, inter what's really good, though, is that you really only can process four to seven bits of data per second because otherwise you would go crazy. Your mind would go <laughs> nuts. Um, you would yeah. literally go insane. Um, so mm -hmm. your brain truncates or filters out a lot of the superfluous information that is not needed. Mostly what we're doing is we're handicapping um, danger or we're predisposed towards survival. Essentially, um, and that's just, that's woven into us. We're looking for, for danger constantly. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll notice those kinds of things more often than not. But just to show you how much you really do filter out, I'm going to play a video. And in this video, I want you to do one thing for me. Um, there's going to be two teams of people. Uh, some people are in a black shirt and some people are in a white shirt. And what I want you to do is I want you just to count the amount of times that people in the white shirt pass the ball to their other teammates. Sounds simple enough. All right. So this is for everybody out there watching. And They're yeah. going to count and then report to us. So we'll That's count right. the amount of times. We want to see some numbers pop up. Type in your answer. Type in your answer of how many times they pass the ball. All right. All right. So what are y'all's answers? You have anyone typing in? I guess oh, we have yeah. a little bit of a delay, it's, yeah. Right? Yeah. We have so, about a, so a delay. A minute delay here. Oh gosh, well, I'll Unless. just yeah, I'll just go ahead. And, go go, go wait yeah. on my So the, the correct answer is sixteen, and you know, with the point of this is actually sixteen. You know, sixteen different passes. Okay. But I think that's what I counted. I'm right. sorry, I've I've given a speech about this before. And so you already kind you were of, looking for the so, gorilla. I mean, yes, I you was looking, looking for, for the gorilla. thing going through. Now, did yeah. you notice though? Okay, so you know you noticed the gorilla, but did you notice that the the curtains changed colors? No, no, I did not notice that. Did you that. notice the person on one of the teams in the black shirt walks off the stage? I did notice someone walking no. off. Okay. But I did not notice I, the color. The, the curtains change colors. The yeah. curtains change colors. I was just laughing at the gorilla. Wow. <laughs> I knew about See? the gorilla. Well, when you're looking for a gorilla, you miss the curtains. That's the point yeah. of this, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> when you're laughing at the gorilla, you miss some other thing. So there's always something. Oh, someone, here are some answers. Christine says 12. Oh. Trina says 14, and so does Marion. Ray says 16, and RJ <laughs> says 15. All right, Rob says 30. Woo, I don't know what he Ray. was watching. Maybe he was uh, counting Birgit all Birgit says 17, Jonah 30. 16. 
think he wasn't counting all the passes, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And that's a really good good eyes there. Did anyone see the gorilla? Yeah, who saw the gorilla? So Besides saw, me, if, because I was looking for it, because I knew it was going to happen. If yeah. you saw the gorilla, <laughs> if you saw the gorilla and you weren't expecting the gorilla, let us know you saw the gorilla. Yeah. So the idea of this is that, you know, you need to make sure to be keen about what you are focusing on. Mm -hmm. You need to be intentional about what you, what, what four to seven bits of data that you're processing. Um, I read a book just recently called uh, Fool's Talk. It's by Oz Guinness. I don't know if you've ever heard of this book. Um, Oz is a great author. And in this book, he talks about weapons of mass distraction. Uh, mm -hmm. Not weapons of mass destruction, but weapons of mass distraction. And what he's talking about is now more than ever, we have so many things that are vying for our attention. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants a piece of you. Everyone wants to say something and no one wants to listen. Um, we have Facebook. How many times have our phones gone off while, you know, we've been on the show? Um, you know, we have, you know, compulsory, you know, activities that we, we you know, we, we're a part of that are distracting us, that are constantly robbing us of what we need, we intend on focusing on. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, I heard it put once that if the devil can't get at you in any other way, he'll do what? You'll waste your time. You'll waste your time. Yeah. That's right. So what you need to be doing is focusing on Scripture. Um, that's clear. That's evident. You know, this is what we're here for is to, to become, you know, proficient in the Word, to, to evangelize. And, you know, the importance of that is that, um, well, I'll go to the next Scripture here. It talks about this in Jeremiah 31, 33. I will put my law in their inward parts, and I'll write it on their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. I love that last bit, and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. well, great scripture. I, yeah, it is a great scripture. It's one of my favorites. And it's, well, how is that going to happen? <laughs> is God going to snap his fingers yeah. and just put it on your heart and your, inside your mind? No, it's, it's through regular Bible study. It's through being intentional about every day, focusing on reading a little bit of scripture, a little bit more, and, and staying in prayer. Um, and this is the importance of the Sabbath for me, mm -hmm. the importance of the holy days. Oh, yes. Because these are carving out actual routines and traditions that no matter what is going on, no matter what data is being bombarded upon me, mm -hmm. I am going to go and observe and draw close to the Lord today because it's the Lord's day. It's the training wheels for me of, of being with God, the Sabbath is. It's the first of many other things that you realize that are important to keep putting into your mind, to keep putting into that closet to keep uh, adjusting your behavior. See, God actually had a physiological reaction happen in your body every time you experience something. It's a process called myelination. Myelin, what, who, uh? You saying what? Myelination, um, it comes from uh, myelin, which is a fatty lipid, lipid substance that coats over the neurological pathways that are in your brain and in your, in your body. This is basically coating over those axons that allow for you to well, gosh, what it was really doing is it's making it more efficient. It's creating, mm -hmm. it's widening the bandwidth. It's the reason why when you practice something over time, you get better and better at doing that thing. Unfortunately, it's also the reason why addiction happens. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why that you get caught in these ruts. Um, but it also makes sense for me of this next scripture that's right on the heels of the one that I brought up in the very beginning. It's Luke 8:18. Take heed, therefore, of how ye hear, right? That's one of our gates. That's one of our things. You know, be aware of what you're putting into your heart. Mm -hmm. For whoever hath, to him shall be given. And whoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even what he has seemeth to have. Oh, King James is getting me tripped up. But that scripture always seems so unfair to me. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean? You know, <laughs> that seems so unfair. Why would God do that? Well, no, bud, this is the way it works. To he that does, more myelination will happen on those, mm -hmm. uh, those axons. You'll yeah. be more proficient in the word. It'll be easier over time. That's yeah. the good news. Yeah. The more you do this, the better you'll be at it. The more you, you read in scripture, the more facile you'll be with it. The more instances that you'll have where you see, uh, this is probably one of those tests right now. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the whole point comes to this. Don't be so flippant of what you subject yourself to. Mm -hmm. um, you have the First Amendment right to say whatever you want in this great country of ours. It's a wonderful right that gives us the right to, to come together as people that uh, share the same kind of common beliefs. 
But just as much as people have the First Amendment right, I think you need to exercise the other part of that, which is I have the right to say I'm not going to listen. Um, you can go over there and say whatever you want, but I'm going to uh, I'm close my ears, as Christ just said, and close my eyes, and I'm not going to listen or view those things. Uh, my wife and I really don't go in for the, the horror flicks or anything like that. It seems like nowadays that, that, that viewpoint of what is obscene is that window is moving closer and cl or further and further away from the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and it's harder and harder to close your mind off from all those horrific things. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a full-time job. We need to be more diligent now than ever. And, and what else I'll bring up now is, is Proverbs 4.23, which talks about the diligence. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are all the issues of life. You know, there it is, folks. Um, Guard your hearts. Um, be aware of what you're subjecting your family to. Be aware that whatever you experience goes into that closet and can never be cleaned out. Don't let someone mosey on into your closet and leave their dirty underwear in there. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Gandhi said, I won't let a man with dirty feet walk through my mind. Uh, I'm going to leave you with this. Or my house, if you're not mine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I would not let a man with dirty feet into my house. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm just kidding. All right, uh, Mike, now I'm really going to get this kicked off. Right, um, we're, 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 off. we're getting kicked off of you. <laughs> That's right. Uh, just kidding. So I want to leave you with this, guys. Uh, this is uh, Paul talking to the Philippians. He says, finally, brothers, whatever, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, and whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Wow, wonderful. Now have some comments. Have some comments what people good. saw and didn't see. So, oh, okay, yeah. What all right, so we have Skip Martin uh, said, well, first we'll say Susan, Susan uh, Vanisdahl says, no, did not see anything. Skip Martin says, I didn't see anything, but balls being passed. So I'll, he was see? paying attention yeah. to him. Uh, Willow Love Al says, I, so he says, I did not see it either. And Amy Hohart says, I saw the gorilla and noticed one person in black shirt leaving at the same time as the gorilla. Also saw the curtain change color. So, gee. Oh, we forgot to rewind it, didn't we? Rewind it, watch it again. It. Yeah, let's just play it back just to prove to people that there was a gorilla, prove that the yeah. curtains did change, and also prove that there was a person walking yeah, on yeah. the stage. Yeah, so play it well, yeah, one more time. Wesley, Wesley, hit the rewind. <laughs> the original video yeah. was on Brain Games, okay. and that's why he, he created this new one because people okay. knew, they say when you're looking for the gorilla, because now you're aware of that, the, mm -hmm. yeah. the, the gig's up, right? Um, but. Yeah. Uh, but then he added the other the two things thing. to make sure, yeah. again, when you're looking for a gorilla, you don't notice the curtain right. or the, yeah. uh, the other person walking I wanted to mention stage. something. So when I heard this story first, I've heard it a while, I also heard a story about radiologists mm -hmm. who did the same thing. And I, they, there's a CT scan. Yeah, this and is so crazy. the CT scan, they asked the radiologist, I think it was like 30, 40 radiologists, mm -hmm. and they said, uh, we want you to look for a tumor in this, in the, in this uh, scan. Oh, wow. And so they all looked in there, and, and they were looking for a tumor, and I guess they found the tumor. But also in it, and you can see right here, right, there's a gorilla. So I'm gonna turn this around if you maybe can get to my camera and we can, I don't have it before we can cue it up. <laughs> there's a gorilla in there. <laughs> there is a gorilla, you probably can't see this, so you have to maybe yeah. search for it. Uh, but there is a gorilla in this, in the, in this CT scan. Jeff, I have some and bad news. And 38 out of 40 radiologists <laughs> did not see, did not the, see the gorilla. <laughs> so it's like, like, yeah, maybe I got cancer. Well, what if I had a gorilla? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> You're not going to get the Come gorilla. Come down with a bad case of the gorilla. <laughs> yeah, you have a gorilla. <laughs> well, I have some comments, too. Uh, Marion and Christine said that they saw the gorilla. Um, Ray said it was his, the gorilla was his sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, nice. uh, Trina said no gorilla, no curtain change, and I asked I asked Ray about him being uh, the gorilla being the sister. He said they're twins, and she had a better mustache than him. <laughs> but uh, Trina said nice accent, Blake. Oh, I'm not sure, oh. Gandhi accent, I think. Oh, that was my Gandhi <laughs> accent. Yes, that's right. Yeah, thank you. And now everyone's saying, oh, there was an orange curtain. And awesome. it changed to red, and I did see the girl leave when the gorilla came on. They, right. they saw it in the second one. So, yeah, I knew, I knew the gorilla was there. I was looking for it. You're looking for <laughs> the gorilla. Like, There's the gorilla. Yeah. Well, you know, a whole lot of guys away. have burnt barbecue uh, based on those. Only We only have four bits of data that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we're not yeah. very good at multitasking. But, um, That's why God only blessed me with two children. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm sure, you know. Gosh, you, you guys put up with so much. Yeah. Ooh. 
That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Well, very, very interesting. Awesome. Well, I wanted to talk about it. one other thing. Okay, if we had a little bit yeah, of time. We, okay. um, we'll make this. Still not the Sabbath. We've got to bring it on. Um, there was <laughs> another, another study yeah. that, that was done out in California, so I don't know how reliable it is. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but there was a, a, a study that was done on implanting false memories. Oh, yes. And we were talking about this when I first got here and how this really shocked me, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't think time was going to uh, allow for it, but um, what they did is they did a study where they brought people in and they said they're doing a, uh, uh, an, an emotional memory study. Mm -hmm. And that's all they told them. They said it'd be a part of the study. That's fine. They came in and they said, well, you know, um, we're going to ask you about a, a memory from your past and we're going to contact your parents so we can get some information about that memory. And so they contacted them and um, they got some, you know, factual information about the memory and they said, you know, um, uh, do you remember this time on, you know, uh, around, I'm not going to say Christmas, but, you know, uh, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. around the 4th of July, right? And yeah. um, do you remember, you know, the family reunion? And they said, yeah, I remember that. And you, do you remember when you were 17 uh, being arrested for assault? I said, what? I said, no, oh. no. And, and that was a false memory. Okay. Um, and so they were right to, to reject it. But they said, no, yeah, you, you know, your parents told us that you are arrested for, for assault. Wow. And so over the course of about six to seven sessions, they kept you know, implanting this thing, kept saying it over and over again, yeah. and kept building buttressing it. information around it. And eventually the participants agreed to it, 70% yeah. of them. That's what's, 70%. Known as, that's what's known as gaslighting, I guess, is the, the term yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's interesting is that um, these folks would start to buttress it. They would say, well, yeah, I remember my dad was being very belligerent that night and he was being very uh, wow. confrontational. Oh, wow. and, he was, and so what your brain does is it fills in the gaps, right? Yeah. And so um, if you tell a person to lie long enough, what? They'll start to believe it's true. Yeah. So, you know, even more evidence to, to really, uh, to protect your heart, to guard what you're, you know, to, to fact check, right? To make you sure. Always fact check, because there's so much, and I, mm -hmm. I talked about this for, I, I was, before you Do ever heard people talking about fake news, <laughs> we on bots were talking about fake news and be careful about fake articles, fake news, because mm -hmm. there's so much misinformation that is, that is out there. Uh, but this reminds me of a study that I heard where they did a similar thing with uh, adults and they told them about a balloon trip. They, had, they said, hey, you took this oh, balloon yeah. trip with a, uh, I think one of your relatives. And so they showed them a picture of them as a child and their relative in the balloon trip, like you know, you can make false pictures. And now you have the, they have the ability to make those false things, yeah. superimposed. So they so, so they showed them that picture. So well, think about it now. Now tell me about that balloon trip. And so none of them had went on this balloon trip with that thing, but by giving them that picture and inserting that in, that in there, they created the story, the false memory of the balloon trip. Yep. Wow. And I actually I talked about this one time at a, at an infuse uh, session, and Mike James was there, and Mike James' brother was there, and so I had a picture of me, Mike James, and his brother in a balloon that I, that I put up on the, uh, the screen. As I, as I remember that time, we, we took Mike's this, a sharp we took guy. this balloon he trip. So, so he, said, so he, he didn't go, he, he, he wasn't going for that he balloon wasn't, trip. He wasn't going for the banana tailpipe, right? Wasn't, right. Yeah, wasn't going to fall for that. But So it, it just shows that you got to guard your mind and you got to watch what the information that's coming in and be careful because there's people out there who are trying to deceive you right. and unfortunately now it's a lot of the people who are what we consider reliable sources that's right are, are, are no longer as reliable as people have always assumed oh yeah those institutions that we've typically relied upon for information uh, journalism is falling apart in front of us yes universities are falling apart Absolutely. in front of us um, you know what do we use and a sea of nihilism you know what do we use as our guide well it's right here guys I mean this is the importance of our Bible um, and the importance of of having routine, having tradition, having a, a way of life that gives you life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, a, you know, no matter what, no matter what, what people are showing us, no matter what pictures they're showing us, mm -hmm. no matter what um, we're up to, we're going to do what this, what this word says. Yeah, and here's something, a couple of comments. Charles Robert on Facebook uh, says, the more often you hear a lie, the more apt you are to believe it. That's and right. that is true. Mm -hmm. uh, Will Love Al, he says, the first thing Jesus said concerning the end time is to be not deceived. And you'll come out my name. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and <laughs> Jeff Steele says, I'm going to take my gorilla on a balloon trip. <laughs> Bring lots of bananas. <laughs> Bring lots of bananas. <laughs> and, and, and I guess the thing, now you got, I had a good thought, but that gorilla on the balloon trip completely messed up my thoughts on this. The, <laughs> <laughs> I had something I was going to say. Make sure he has the color changing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I know, I know what I was going to say. Okay. So, so we're, you know, the end times, I, I was always 
like when we study the end times and we read about the beast and the false prophet, mm -hmm. and we, we wonder how is like some, this, this, whatever this is, this organization, this person, yeah. and this false prophet, how are they going to deceive the world? Yeah. How are they, how are they going to, nah, who's going to believe that? Because can't they read it in the Bible? About the, like I would say, yeah. well, it's in the Bible. I'm not going to believe those people because I can read it in the Bible. And but now, what I see with the false images, the false mm -hmm. video, the, mm -hmm. the the things that people can manipulate, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, you know, the, the continually feeding you these false lines. Yeah. That you can th this scenario that we read in Revelation. Now I know how they're going to do it. Well, did you see the this thing where they they're deceive. using they're yes. using AI, right? Yes. Artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. To, they did a video with Obama where he, he was, they just used someone, they mapped everything, they mapped all these points out, and, the, and they basically made Obama say something. That was never, he never mm -hmm. said it, and, but they used artificial intelligence with computer, you know, generated graphics, yeah. and it's seamless. I mean, you mm -hmm. would not have been able to tell that the, the, the video was completely fabricated. And that's mm -hmm. the idea, is it's called confabulation. It's, it's where there's a, an error in your memory. Um, yeah. And that's uh, but one place we can always rely on right here. That's it. That's it's really not going to change. Yeah. They keep keep your copy of it because they may try to change it on you, that's right. and that's they may try to remove stuff that they find offensive mm -hmm. or just not politically correct. Yeah. But we're going to keep keep the whole word. That's right. Yeah. Keep yeah. studying yeah. it. All right. Well, we brought on the Sabbath, haven't we? Or we're, we're still there. We're not yeah. there we're quite there yet. yet. Sun it's still there. Sunset's eight twenty-five. I guess there. some folks out east coast maybe have mm -hmm. made it. Uh, definitely in Nova Scotia. Um, Nova Scotia. Sabbath, I'm sure, has begun. That's Absolutely. The way it is. <laughs> Thank brought. you, Alicia, for um, at the, the drawing. That was so cool. <laughs> Here's another thing. I, I, I have to keep reading these good comments. What, what's, what's these good saying? comments. Okay, Rebecca Cottingham says, even children believe it if a bad parent says they'll never amount to anything. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. And that's oh, one that thing, you know, you've know, you got to encourage children, not oh, demean them. So that's the difference between mm -hmm. a lot of people is mm -hmm. they, they when they're raised bad or in a bad family or educate them encouraged too. and educated. Educate them educated. because um, you know when you went to the winter not winter family when was that uh, quality church retreat? Mm -hmm. I did my presentation on um, the the youth educational uh, adventures for why for uh, for born to win and uh, CEM. But inside that, I presented that article where that woman was telling kids that uh, abortion is a part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. That was like kind of like going to the dentist. Um, and you know, if you're a kid, you don't, you've never been taught the Word of God, you don't know. Yeah, right. yeah maybe it is a part of God's plan. So it's very important yeah. that you know you tell that. them what's so, um, because otherwise um, they're not going to be able to parse out what is what's so. so. Mm -hmm. very, very important. Very important. Very true. All right. Well, we're going to take another short break, and we'll be back in just a moment. All right. We'd like to offer you two booklets on today's program. We'd like to offer you the pamphlet, Did the Apostolic Church Observe the Sabbath and Holy Days? Yes, they did. Get this pamphlet and find the proof. We also want to offer you The Great Day of the Lord, a study of the book of Joel. This will give you detailed information on what the day of the Lord is. To get both of these items free of charge, all you need to do is call toll-free 1-888-578-8791. That's 1-888-578-8791. Or you can order by visiting our website, www.cgi.org. That's www.cgi.org. Thank you again, Blake, for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely, thanks for having me, guys. And again, Absolutely. thank everyone out there who are who are watching on on Facebook, on YouTube, our website, the apps, or wherever you may be watching mm -hmm. this. You may be watching this at a later time. Well, thank you for watching <laughs> as well. 
So we want to say have a good night, and may God bless your Sabbath. God bless your Sabbath. God bless your Sabbath. Goodbye. Our free material is provided by the generous support of our church members and additional independent donors who believe in our mission of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world.